I heard a rumor that you you accidentally joined Escape Their Fate because you were trying to join a Skylar Drive. Is that true? Yeah, so yeah. Dude, so I don't know if you remember, but we actually do know each other already. I, yeah? Uh, I used to be the, uh, I used to work at Tragic Hero Records back in the day. Oh, shut the fuck up. Yeah, I used oh, to be their publicist guy. No, dude, door. fuck, you can say fuck, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I think the last time I saw you, we were at a strip club put together in like 2013 or something crazy. I think so, yeah. Yeah, dude. I think that might have been the last time I went to one. Yeah, probably. Perhaps, yeah, perhaps. Me too, man. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Craig and I Tragic were not Hero stripping. Days were days, though, man. <laughs> That's when I was like the most active with Dead Rabbits. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you guys had just at the time, and mm -hmm. Tragic Hero was interested in in Dead Rabbits, so that was fun, man. It was a good time, yeah. Because I think you guys had just dropped Shape Shift Shapeshifter, or you're about to drop it, I believe. Yeah, because that was the album on Tragic Hero, and then yeah. we did the Shapeshift tour. Oh yeah, <laughs> and then the so Tragic funny. Hero tour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Tragic mm -hmm. Hero tour. Fuck. Who was that? Skylar Drive on that? No, it was. Um, I set my friends on fire. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And set to stun and. Yeah. Damn. That, that, was, that was a good tour. It's I think a good I little package. That. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, a lot's changed since since then. I mean, like you say, you're not you're not hitting strip clubs anymore. You're not you're not about that lifestyle no, anymore. Yeah. None of those clubs. Don't drink anymore. Yeah getting what, older maturing you know i feel you i feel you what what's it been three years now for sobriety three years yeah and i hit three years and my my brother-in-law uh gave me a very special thing which locks me into sobriety for sure because he gave me his 33 year coin oh shit okay because he's on 33 years so he's got 30 years on me so he's like i want to give you my 33 year coin so now you gotta live up to it for the next 33 i'm like all right hell yeah I, mean, I was pretty dedicated already but yeah that really cements it right there that's a very important coin I can't well yeah gave it. that's gotta be some good motivation right you got something oh, to sure, sort of yeah. strive for and it's really cool yeah. that you do have somebody so close to you that has been through all these same things like i know you know i haven't i haven't gone through it myself but i know people that have i know obviously having a good support system is probably pretty key and oh, yeah. especially having someone like your he's brother he's known me through the through the entire process i mean my first album with the band we did we did with john so nice it's crazy was there he's like what's that i said he's he's seen it all <laughs> that probably makes it easier too because you don't have to explain all the shit to him <laughs> he's already been there oh, yeah. i'm yeah. sure he's had plenty of bands come through his studio that have had the same problems he's always having meetings at his house so yeah he's always been like that back of my mind inspiration when I've right. you know gone through the through the waves of oh man I need to get some help am I ready to quit do I think I need to quit you know you go through all those different stages and then finally you just get to a point where it's like I gotta right. I gotta stop and you're talking about Feldy right yeah Feldy yeah so like what's it been like working with him all through these all these years because you've seen him tra transition and change and going through different projects as well throughout the years like I mean, oh it's yeah it's been like it's been great it just feels like when I get into his studio with ETF, it just feels like home. Yeah. Cause when I, when I went in there the first time we were all just trying to find our new sound. Cause you know, I had just joined and mm -hmm. the band had only had one EP and album out at that point. So it's like, let's find what our sound is. And John really helped, helped us with that. So getting back in his studio anytime just feels like, all right, I'm back to the, back to the roots you know right yeah you got a little bit of comfortability there like, oh yeah do you i mean he, pu he pushes me harder than than anybody else i mean i leave i leave those sessions so yeah. beat and sore and <laughs> when you do like, like that's out of my range man he's like no it's not you can do it we're gonna fuck. we're gonna stay in the studio till you do it I'm like, uh see, all right man <laughs> now i just picture like that uh that famous clip from the used when Burt crack is singing the student like throwing trash cans at i'm like harder <laughs> dude i used to watch that same dvd all the time dude it was so what was like the uh, uh, love and memory maybe, or something maybe memories. memory yeah oh, yeah dude, i used to 
I burnt the shit out of that disc, dude. Used to watch it so much, man. Yeah. I love that the U's is still out there doing it too. Yeah, same. And like, we there's... just missed them. I we were in Australia the same time as uh, them and Papa Roach were out there doing some oh, shows, serious. and I was hoping that we had a day off that just so happened to be in the same city that they were playing, but it yeah. just didn't line up. Unfortunately, Damn, it never does, right? <laughs> no. Sometimes it does. That yeah. one time we were on tour in Australia. And Smashing Pumpkins was playing down the street. Oh, cool. When we had a day off. So I got to go see them live, which was great. Very cool. So I was cool. really hoping that the same thing happened so I could go see the used. But did you uh did you get to meet Billy Corgan? No. No. No, I just I was still uh still partying then. So I watched yeah. Smashing Pumpkins and then by the time they were on the last song, I was ready to go yeah. to <laughs> bar. Smash your own pumpkins after that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, was there something like a, a big aha moment for you that clicked for sobriety or were you just like, you were just kind of like a gradual, like I got to fucking stop situation. It was definitely a gradual thing. You know, you wake up those days where you're praying to the porcelain God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was just, you know, the band has just been so go, go, go. And even when ETF hasn't been extremely active, I've always been so go, go, go. It's all I've known since I was 16 years old. Mm hmm. So anytime I got into those moments, it was like I would go a week or two weeks and then you'd feel better and you'd fall right back into it, right yeah. back in the same bingy ways. So as soon as COVID hit and I had no excuse, I had no tour manager or babysitter right. to make sure I was taken care of, um, I'm like, all right, man, this is, this is ridiculous. Like I'm in, I'm in my 30s now. This, mm -hmm. is, this isn't the way to live life or act you know, it's time to, time to grow up. So, yeah. Well, I mean, at least it wasn't some, uh, like major moment where you like, you crashed a car in a house or something like that, <laughs> you know, something like, yeah. And you know, my, my brain works in weird ways. So I would wake up in such a anxiety sweat sometimes. Mm. And I was so tired of, of feeling like that. Yeah. Like what, what did I do? Where was I? Cause I, I would just black out. I have no memory of anything. Yeah. And it's like, dude, I'm, I need to stop. As, something, yeah. ho something horrible could happen and I need to be in control of myself and in control of my own thoughts. And I'm, I'm so fearful for instance, like on planes because mm -hmm. I'm not in control. So it's like, why do I want right. to get so out of control by yeah. acting like that? It's like, what is wrong with me, man? So would you find yourself take that control? You know what I mean? Yeah. Would you find yourself drinking more on the planes just to like, calm your nerves oh yeah and it was just another excuse yeah oh i have a fear of flying better drink yeah yeah you know what i mean and then in sobriety you start learning that drinking wasn't necessarily the problem drinking yeah. was your solution to an original problem and so then you start getting in the back of your head of all these horrible things that happened to you that pushed you to want to medicate in that way right and so that's tough to come to terms with just remembering things from my childhood and horrible traumatic moments that i really need to really just need to heal and but that's you know it's a healthy thing you need to confront those things yeah. and, and heal in your own way and it's not good to just live your life self-medicating and being self-destructive and dragging others around you down with yeah. you it's just, just no way to do it well and like you said like that stuff like it just doesn't go away you know like ignoring like how you feel and ignoring like things happening in like in your past like you can't you can only ignore them for so long until they like really reach the surface and then unfortunately for a lot of people when they finally do reach the surface it's too late and it's like yeah. it's overwhelming you know i mean oh, yeah. yeah i mean you're a dad i'm a dad so we know that like being the head of the household so to speak like having to be the strong one most of the time in a lot of situations like it's it's really easy to forget to kind of check in with yourself and be like, oh, oh yeah, well, how am was, I doing? it was just a very, a very selfish way to yeah. live. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, I, I miss my kids every second of the day. So let's just, you know, my selfish way of thinking back then was let's just party. Yeah. Like rinse, repeat. Yeah. I always compared it to Adam Sandler in the movie click, but instead of a remote control, it was just a bottle, oh, you know, it's like, oh, I'll just have yeah. a good time. When I get home, I'll be home. Finally. You know, I don't yeah. want to count the hours of the day or stare at the clock or whatever. And it's like, what a selfish way to think. Yeah. I can still be present while not being present. You know right, what I mean? Right. So that's just something I had to figure out for myself. So, so do you find this 
you know, new lifestyle difficult when you're in your old, like, haunts in your old lifestyle ways? Like, if you're on the road, if you're with a band, you're in clubs or just any kind of setting, do you find it difficult? Yeah, it, it was just a, you know, that's just another part of me I had to come to terms with. I'm such a yes man. Mm -hmm. You know, I just go with the flow right. so much, which is, which has gotten me into horrible situations in the past. And it's like, you need to just learn how to say no and not feel guilty about it. Yeah. You know, I used to always feel bad if I said no to somebody, but if it's something I need to say no to, then that's my right. Right. I need to do it. So I had to stop caring. Who cares if, who cares if they're upset if you say no? Mm -hmm. You need to for you. Yeah. Start caring about number one. And number one is yourself. 100%, man. You know, you can't make anybody else happy if you're not happy. You can't, you can't seek forgiveness until you forgive yourself. Like you gotta, you gotta look inward before you're able to look outward. And do you feel like sometimes like you were, you were afraid to say no because you didn't want to like say no to opportunities. Like you didn't want to take a chance on missing out just on something. Just no to anything. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, I, I grew up just never feeling good enough. Then I got, you know, involved in music, which you kind of put yourself out there and you, you sell yourself and I didn't feel good enough. And then, then I had the opportunity to join another band, which anybody that knows the history of the band, mm -hmm. once I joined this one, it was really, you're not good enough. So yeah, it's just like, right. I just sunk really, really deep. And I just, I always try to include everybody and just make everybody feel good. And, you know, I, it, it just rem reminds me of times in school where it, I compare it to Adam's song from Blink-182, the line where he says, I laugh the loudest who would have known. Mm -hmm. I always connected with that. Yeah. So I was always like the class clown growing up because I just didn't want to be judged. It felt felt better to feel like people were laughing with me instead of mm -hmm. laughing at me, you know? Right. Almost like if you cut them off before they have a chance, you know, if you like get to it before they can, if you make the joke before they can or something. Exactly. Yeah. Th th things like that. I always remember a specific moment where I was being picked on in gym class, very cliche. And uh, these these two dudes threw me in a trash can. Dude, that happened to me. Really? <laughs> yeah. Threw me down into a trash can. The yeah. trash can fell over and it uh. was like, you know, it was one of those moments in like a, a show where time sort of slows down a bit. Yeah. And I got out and I just saw everybody looking and laughing and, and something clicked. And for some reason, I got up just, you know, banana peel on my shoulder, right, right, whatever. And I just decided to start chasing these guys around like, whoa, <laughs> and it felt like the laughs that were directed at me were now laughing with me like, with oh, my me, God, yeah. he's going to get him. He doesn't even care that he was thrown. Yeah. In the past. So it's like I had to try to. It's like I learned how to not care about people treating me like shit yeah you know which can be a good it's not a good thing it yeah just carried on and then you find you find ways to self-medicate and mm -hmm. then it, it's really not a good thing so it took me a while to, to grow up and realize what i was doing to myself and how i was reacting to things but you know i think it's all part of growing up 100 percent. yeah i mean that can be a good defense like you said to grow growing up it can be a good way to like you know kind of defend yourself mentally physically whatever but you you never really have any offense at that point you're just you're constantly being yeah you're just always on yeah. always on the defense and then you just you start to realize how how often you use that defense mm -hmm. in every situation of life you know and it's a it's a crazy realization to come to but it, I, I feel like it's necessary yeah especially if you're on a path of self-healing you know, you realize you're the guy that just never speaks up for themselves. So, you know, let's let's say like the relationship being in a band, I'll just bottle everything up. And then by the time I reach my breaking point, it's like just going for the throat. Like somebody could say, what's up, man? In a weird way. It's like, what What do you mean? What's up? Because You're just always, you know, <laughs> yeah. like you're in the corner. Right. And then you finally come in for the attack. It's like, where is this coming from? Yeah, like, oh, let you... me tell you where it's coming from. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Like, why are you so cagey, man? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, it, ridiculous. So, like, in the, you know, the respect of, like, living this healthier lifestyle, um, are you, do you have plans for, like, when you're on the road, like, how you, like, are you, are you an active guy? You try to, like, stay physically, like, active as far as, like, working out and stuff like that? I do, yeah. I got really busy with Twitch, but mm -hmm. I feel like I got in the best shape of my life over the pandemic. I was going to say, you look like you trimmed down, man, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. As soon as I 
put the bottle down, I definitely dropped a down, lot of LPs. Down to it. <laughs> and then I started uh, hitting the gym pretty heavily. But once touring started becoming active again, it's just like my days are so so filled up with, okay, how can I figure out how to go live today on my mm -hmm. Twitch channel? And then I got to get to sound check and do this and do that. But it's it's really good to try to have a schedule for yourself. Yeah. Have a routine that you can stick to. So, you know, I got to give a shout out to Twitch for really helping me in that sense. Because even when touring got active again, the fact that I had my laptop and I brought out my system and I could just set up and, and talk to fans, see how their day was going, play some mm -hmm. games. It was a whole new ball game for me. Cause usually I would just wake up and be like, Oh, what's the closest bar that's open. Right. You know, and now I can look forward to waking up and, Oh, is there a gym close? No. All right. I'll just go live on yeah. <laughs> live, play some games, hang out with people. How'd you get uh, started in the whole Twitch universe? Um, it was recommended to me by a bunch of my friends. Mm -hmm. And then we did the drug in me is gold tour right before the pandemic hit. And Ronnie was going live on Twitch a lot. He's like, you should just do it, man. Just do it. Yeah. I'm like, all right. You know, we, he was streaming just in the green room. And I remember walking into the green room and playing some Mario Kart. I think we were in New York and he was live. I'm like, all right, let me look into this. Then as soon as everything shut down and I had all the time in the world. Yeah. That's when I'm like, all right, let's figure this out. So when I started, it was just like on a MacBook, mm -hmm. the most lowest quality glitchy laggy dude they're so bad streams of all time <laughs> when i start reaching out to people that are trying to help me get started they're like dude you can't you a mac can do it but yeah. for what you're trying to do you can't be doing it on a mac and yeah. so then i got my first pc quickly learned you shouldn't buy pre-built pcs uh. or it's like cheaper to just buy the parts and put it together yourself so yeah. it was exciting it was like i was learning all these new things on the side of of going live and the community really came together and, and helped me out with that. And in return, they told me that I helped them and, you know, and AA, they talk about being of service and it's true. It just feels good to, to be of service and be there for someone. You know, if one person says, Oh man, you really helped me today. Or, yeah. or if it's something as small as thank you so much for going live, I was having a bad day and your streams always make me smile. It's like, yes, you know, Dude. It just feels good. Yeah. It's gotta be great because like you're interacting with fans, you're getting to like, no new you're getting to know people on a whole different level than you were you know, oh yeah and like, like a whole another side of craig which is great yeah. and it's like you know especially early on it had be nice that like you weren't at a bar talking to people you're at your house talking to people so you're you're not around those temptations as much like that, early yeah. on i'm sure that probably helps oh yeah and it turned into you know when touring finally started happening some of the community they would get together oh we're all coming to this show and we've gone out to like Waffle House together. Oh, that's so great. After the show, which reminds me of when I was really young and first started touring and you yeah. would just be in the van. And what are you guys doing after the show? We don't know. Yeah, yeah. Is there somewhere to eat, somewhere to shower? <laughs> Dude, yeah. Twitch really needs to figure out that whole MacBook thing. <laughs> I remember I, I bought a MacBook because uh, I needed a new computer and it was right around the time I started doing Twitch. And I was like, perfect. I got a brand new computer. I'm going to start doing this Twitch thing. And then I realized like, oh, doesn't really work so well <laughs> on that platform. Yeah. It's great for great for music and yeah. obviously Apple products when it comes to touring seem to be the go to yeah go to thing. You know, anytime somebody texts the group and it's that different color, yeah. it's like whoa, whoa, dude. I know. I what device it. are you on, Mister yeah. Android? So I didn't know I was texting a poor person. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, I, I never got because cool I used to have though, Android too. Meet and greet, somebody has those, and it's like, yeah, they'll open it up four different ways to take a photo. Phones are rad, but dude, yeah, I, I used to be on Android and I never got the whole like Apple appeal. I, I thought it was like just this weird, like culty thing <laughs> back in the day. And so then did I. I, it was like 12 years ago, and yeah. I, went from a, a, I went from a sidekick to an iPhone. Oh, wow. Damn, I still the miss the sidekick. Dude, sidekick is the OG emo phone, the MySpace phone, man. Flip it up, type man. it out. It's the best. That's got speaking of, man, like because you were around the MySpace days and you were you were oh, hanging yeah. on there. Like I'm 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 35 years old. I think you're near around that age, right? Just turned 36. 36, yeah. So we, we came from the same era, man. Like the, the golden era of MySpace blogs and having a profile song. HTML so you can have 
top 16 instead of top eight dude i got so good at coding because of myspace <laughs> really yeah just because like just like you know putting like little graphics and shit on my page and all that stuff yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean i don't know i don't know anything about anything about it now but back then i was so good at all that shit dude i always tell people when i get into a conversation about myspace that it was it was really ahead of its time because mm-hmm. yeah. the way yeah. i view it it had every popular social media platform of today yeah all just on one personal page oh yeah yeah it was like a facebook page but you click on the photos you're an instagram Mm -hmm. you go to the comment section you're on twitter you go to the music section that they have you're on you're on spotify which back then it used to 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 pure volume pure volume yeah or, yeah, or something like that you know so it was like I feel like people took different elements from the MySpace pages and just created its own app for it. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, and like, I feel like a lot of companies have tried to like recreate that you know aesthetic again, but like it just doesn't seem to like. Anytime anyone tries, like especially when it comes to music, anytime an app tries to create something that's like focused around music, for whatever reason, it just never seems to take off. Like it never becomes like the like the thing. Like music almost has to be like a secondary thing. Like like TikTok yeah. is a social media like connection platform with amazing music discoverability factors like bands get blow up on huge on tiktok but it's not a music app like people aren't going there for music you know and i think that's seems to be like the the way to go because back then myspace like yeah if you were a band in 05 like you had to have a myspace page or you weren't oh, shit yeah. it and was the end all be all yeah you better have a fuck ton of friends or you're not getting booked look like <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you ever fuck around tiktok at all no, I mean, I try getting into it. Mm-hmm. The drummer for Dead Rabbits, who also comes out and, and drum techs for ETF a lot of the times, he was really big into it. And so when we were on the road with Dead Rabbits, he made like a little video with me and it got over a million something views. Nice. And it just reminded me of like Vine. Yeah. yeah. Like I just, you know, ad libbed some words to a SpongeBob audio. Right, right it blew up and i'm like i I still don't get it (laughs) i downloaded it i try to go on there i try to post something here and there but yeah i don't know i feel like i'm so disconnected from what's what's in right right now i feel like nowadays because it definitely was like this like weird viney kind of just dancing app initially and i feel like now it's more like it's more like youtube like it's more of like a video like hosting platform even more than like a social media landscape and it's just like a lot of times people just like post videos and talking like almost like they would be doing a Twitch, but it's just like shorter yeah. bite-sized content. Yeah. Know? I go on there. I look at some videos. I'm like, man, these look pretty, yeah. pretty professional. Yeah. And I go in there and try to make a video. I'm like, I can't post this. I know, I mean, it's man. It's like a TikTok class or something. I was going to say, yeah, I have like a James Cameron editing degree to make some of this shit. <laughs> yeah. Like I tried, I tried posting on the escape TikTok, which is escape the fate official, I believe. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I was like, all right, let's start being active on TikTok. And I can never get any of the other guys to be active on anything. Like yeah. if you were to go to Robert's Instagram, I don't even think he posts on there. So it's difficult. So it all boils down to me when I log on. Yeah. Like, all right, how do I put this together? I'm just trying to post this story image as a TikTok. Yeah. Like, how do I do the audio? So if you right. go on and see one and it's just like my voice in the background, <laughs> escape the face, new secret. <laughs> Marcel, out now. Like, oh oh my god! I might as well just roll with the fact that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I feel Which like goes yeah, back to what we're talking about, just make it funny. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, I feel like if you just did a video of yourself just talking, like just being, you know, the authentic you, I feel like you just yeah. just um, being you. I feel like would garner a lot of attention. I feel like people because yeah, yeah. that's what people want, man. People crave authenticity. People want to, you know, they want real shit. You know, obviously there's lots of editing effects on all social media, but at the end of the day, I think people want like a real genuine connection with somebody. And that's... Oh yeah. People, people crave authenticity. I, I crave authenticity. Mm-hmm. But, and I know that's why it's tough for a lot of people, including myself is when you don't, you don't feel mm-hmm. authentic to yourself. It's tough to, to portray that, you know? Yeah. It's all about self love these days, man. That's very that's important man. for everybody. Self love is so, so important. Who cares about what other people think? Yeah. I love that, man. I love, I love self-love. <laughs> self-love. Do you, uh, so do, I mean, Yo, self, 2020. <laughs> it's all about loving yourself, baby. So do you, uh, I mean, in that respect with like this new outlook on life, do you ever like 
get that imposter sh- syndrome then with certain aspects like your career or do you feel like pretty grounded? Um, I'm, I'm definitely feeling a lot more grounded Yeah, lately. It's just tough because when you're going through that and you've lived your life a certain way for a long time, you feel like you've lost yourself. You're, you're just faced with like, well, who am I? Yeah. You know, who, who am I really? Like, have I been playing a part? Yeah. Yeah. It definitely just feels like a lifetime ago and no part of that felt like me. Yeah. So I definitely had imposter syndrome for sure. And then now it's like, well, wait, who am I then? Yeah. Which is tough. So it's like, you just try to revert back to your childhood a little Mm -hmm. bit. You know, I just revert back to my roots and I revert back to who, who do I feel like when I'm around my loved ones? Mm -hmm. Like, who do I feel like when I'm around my mother or around my kids or who did I feel like I was when I was around my, my grandmother and, and things like that, or my siblings, my sister's here visiting. Oh, nice. we just had a, hey sis. So it's like, yeah, you know, that's obviously that's who I am. Mm-hmm. So that's who I need to be, be who you are. That's an interesting point because like you're saying, you, you kind of have to get to know this new person. Like the Craig that's like not drinking and going on benders anymore is different than the Craig you've been for, I mean, you're, you're, you're still oh, Craig, yeah, but it's, that's what the whole album, the whole new album is about actually. Yeah. Yeah. There's some songs that kind of stray away from it, but pretty much the majority of every track on the record lyrically is about killing that nice. part of you, like killing the part yeah. of you. that's not, that's not you that has come in to try to take over and you're kind of overcoming that. So a lot about rebirth, a lot about growth, a, a lot about that. And I love it. I'm very excited for That's it. That's got to be very relatable for a lot of people too. I and, hope so. Yeah. And so are these, so like the recent singles you guys put out, like Hate Myself and Low, like are those going to be a part of this project or is this new record just completely a brand new thing? Oh yeah, Low, Hate Myself, both of those are on the, going to be on the new record cool Uh, we're still trying to finalize like all the mixes and the track list and things like that i feel like we have 16 songs so we want to narrow it down Mm -hmm. but um just releasing singles up until the release which is september 1st oh yeah and the record is called out of the shadows right yeah so we decided we're gonna name the tour that Mm -hmm. we had a song named that that i don't think is going to make the album Oh, but nice. I really liked the title of it a lot. Yeah. And I feel like it explained what I just said the entire album is about. Yeah. In a good way, like out of the, you know, you're coming out of the shadows. So I'm like, I really like that. That one's really speaking to me more so than just like naming it Rebirth or mm-hmm. some, something like that. I really liked how Out of the Shadows felt and well, sounded. It can have a lot of different meanings for a lot of people too as well. You know, Out of the Shadows can mean like, like you know, just like you're coming back from like, you know, the COVID shit and all that stuff too. Mm-hmm. And like, just any, any, anything like, I mean, obviously yeah. knowing your story, knowing your back. I always story. love, like I, mm-hmm. I tell, I told Jamie this, I've told every publicist and label this, like when they ask, let's do a track by track, you know, really dive in and explain exactly what this song is about. Yeah. I, I pers- my personal opinion, I hate that. Yeah. I don't like that at all. I want, I want the listener to interpret a song in the way that they want to interpret it. Mm-hmm. You know, if they're hearing the words and they're connecting it to something in their life and it's just helping them feel better about it or, or pushing them through it. That's what I want. I feel like when you explain exactly what it's about and someone really loves the music and they're listening to that, I feel like it becomes harder for them to connect to it on whatever they were connecting it with. Yeah. And they know exactly what the song is supposed to be about. Yeah, you don't want to ruin it for somebody. You want to take the yeah, piss out of it. Yeah, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. And I feel like a lot of times that's just like, you know, it just kind of gets put in the machine of like music promotion. It's like, well, we got to get some content together. We got to, you know, do oh, some yeah. fun things to promote and I'm it. always like, down if it's, yeah. let's say if it's somebody was asking me, for example, what is this song specifically about on This War Is Ours? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's been a decade. Mm-hmm. If it's a new album that's not out yet, it's like let people connect with it, digest sit with it, it. it the way, yeah, digest it. Then maybe later on I can be like, oh, you know what this song's actually about. Yeah, 
that's see that's fun too because i mean yeah because some somebody can like really build like a narrative around the song for years and years and then it kind of like it almost becomes like even more of an interesting piece like well actually this yeah. is what the song's about i was like oh my god i never thought about it that way you know yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean in that same vein i gotta know is there any any question that a journalist has asked you that you're just like if i ever hear this question one more time i'm gonna fucking lose it <laughs> um i don't know i don't know if there's any specific yeah question like, that really like where'd hurt. your band name come from <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel like the bands sometimes questions like that if it's if it's a question i heard every interview yeah 15 years ago right if i get asked a question like that today i'm like for real right it's always in the back of my head for real i'll i'll <laughs> answer it you know i'm gonna say it i'm gonna give you but the in answer the back of my head, I'm like, <laughs> really come on yeah yeah, speaking of going back 15 years, man, I, I love the uh, I love the look you got going these days, man. I, I saw a lot of comment section Thank too, you. like you got this fire engine red hair for anyone that's just listening or watching, but it's got top yeah, of the yeah. black hair. Two tone <laughs> motherfucking Craig over here, man. I love it. Thank you. You're good. Yeah, I cut it really, really short over I hate mentioning COVID so much. But I know it's over COVID yeah. COVID, it was cut really short, and I've always just box dyed it black, like on tour mm -hmm. in a hotel room and my natural color is like really light. And I'm like, I've never done crazy color. Yeah. It's going to grow out. I'm going to wait to color it. So I've, it's been blue. It's been silver. It's been green. I, I want to do red. As a, uh, as a bald brother, I uh, love it when I see somebody my age with long hair. I'm like, fuck yeah, man, you do it. You live the dream, dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude. So I got sick with COVID. Oh yeah. And for six months after that, I was like losing. Oh no. Like, right back here, it was like really thinning out really bad. Yeah. It started coming back over the last three months. Like my hairstylist is like, oh yeah, it's coming back. I can see the hair. Did you have to do anything? I was, I was getting so nervous. No, I guess it was just something that was happening to people that got sick. Oh, of course, dude. What? Oh, it, we're dealing with hair loss. Dude. And I'm like, oh my God. So Robert called me out once. It was like our first tour back. From yeah. The pandemic. He's like, yo, bro, I see a little spot back there. Mm. <laughs> no, that's not even in my family. There's no way. Oh, no. I'm like, all right, I better enjoy it while I got it. <sighs> but luckily, it started coming back. So Lucky, man. Let's put a pin in that for another day. Yeah, man. That's, that's what's crazy about COVID, dude. They keep finding all, like, they're like, oh, uh, so it turns out your toes get a little bit longer after you have COVID. Like, they were, or yeah. it, there's like no not really but i'm saying like that's like the shit that like people say like oh, there's always like some new like new side side effect See, that's that, why i wasn't shocked when yeah i know right <laughs> oh really i'm really glad uh, i i uh i clarified because you're gonna be up telling yeah. people for the rest of the week like did you know that <laughs> i can't even remember if it's from getting covid or if it's from getting a shot actually i'd have to look it back up i don't even care anymore because it's not happening anymore yeah man man dude it's, it's it was a crazy time um yeah. speaking of hair do you what uh what inspired the facial hair man the soul patch I, it's you've got such a distinct look i don't sure. know actually i think i was just really really young yeah like i started growing the uh i call it the v for vendetta yeah that's it <laughs> yeah that was coming in when i was like 12 years old dude yeah yeah just rocking so when you're 12 it. 13 you're just starting high school like as a freshman i would just leave it yeah. And it was so patchy back mm -hmm. then too, but I'm like, yeah, I got hair on my face. Right, right. Yeah, then I got to like 16, 17. It was like, I need to shave it. I need to shave it. I need to shave it. And now it's just like, whatever. I kind of like it. I love it, man. I love that everyone, every other like dude in a metalcore band grows a beard and you're like, fuck it. I'm going to be giant Depp. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I can't grow a beard. It's like, it just mm. doesn't come in anywhere other than here. <laughs> Reminds me of Joe Dirt. You're like, oh, you mean it just comes in all white trashy like that? All patchy? Yeah. <laughs> all patchy on the cheeks? <laughs> e for Vendetta right here. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, that's fucking great. So the tour, uh, back to that, it's, it's called the Out of the Shadows Tour, named after the yeah, album, yeah. right? So did you get to handpick this lineup, or was this something that just kind of like came together naturally? A little bit, yeah. So we, we were definitely interested in some bands, and we reached out to some of them, and, and Drugs was interested, and then... My booking agent filled me in on this band Point North. And I was like, yo, those so guys good. are rad. We should get them. Just did a song with Stitched Up Heart. I saw that, yeah. I mean, they're under the same management company. So it's like, oh, yeah, let's bring them out too. Mm -hmm. And then 
I was just introduced to Garzy, so I'm very excited to see see him play live. Yeah, I had no idea who Garzy was, and when I saw the bill, I thought it was Garza from Suicide Garza. Silence and the Garza podcast. I'm like, oh shit, they got Garza coming. Like, is he just gonna like do his podcast like live or something over there? <laughs> Age, microphone, desk. I'm like, that's the live podcast. Yeah, I was like, that's a good idea. He does everybody out from all the bands, does yeah. a quick view. Yeah, then I clicked on the picture. I'm like, no, that's not that's not the same. <laughs> not the same at all. Yeah, yeah. I saw you dropped a stitched up heart uh collab too. So what I saw was it was being like the credits or whatever it was, stitched up heart featuring Escape to Fate. Is that correct? Or is it just supposed to be featuring Craig? Well, it's just me, but at the same time, it's produced by Thrasher. Okay. Our previous guitarist. Yeah. Which I think is kind of cool. Okay. Because I know it's been together, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because I know it's usually, uh, it usually says like, you know, featuring Craig on these songs, but this one says Escape the Face. So I was wondering if that was like a conscious decision might, to kind of. It, it might be a conscious decision for tags yeah. or whatever like that, you know, like a Spotify tag or something. Yeah. I don't know how it works. Right, right. I just oh, sing, man. ISRC. <laughs> I just sing and hope for the best. Yeah. yeah speaking of Thrasher, like he left uh, not too long ago, and there really wasn't like any real big announcement for the whole situation. Have you, do you? Yeah, because we were just as we were just the band. I feel like me personally, I don't know how Thrasher was feeling, but maybe I'm pretty sure he was feeling the same way. It was just like a natural separation. So it was like there was never a. I quit. I don't want to do this anymore. And there mm -hmm. was a never, okay, well, you're out. Like, yeah. you're out of the group. That never happened. It was just the pandemic happened. He got really busy in the studio with Barker, working on things. He was having a great time with it. Once touring started happening, he wasn't available because yeah. he was in the studio. So we had to find somebody to fill in, and Maddie was filling in. And then it's just, you know, the availability was never there. We had toured for a year and a half now using Maddie. And now it was time to start talking about getting in the studio and doing a new record. And then it got to the point where it's like, all right, time for photos and videos. And it was like, I think Gavin's just done. Yeah. So, oh, wow. So was there any, any definitive like. There is no done. definitive thing. It's just like, all right, well, it's time to time to move forward and if you're yeah. not available and he's told me he's like man if you guys ever need me for anything just hit me up i'm like all right for sure nice. so you know from my end there's all still love there but as they say the show must go on so do you feel like since there wasn't like a big announcement on either side that it have fans started kind of choosing sides or like talking shit in the comments no, we haven't we haven't really dealt for that and as yeah. time goes on and the more that it happens with groups mm -hmm. i'm just like just let them let them talk. People are going to be upset, but the music is what's going to end up talking the most, and the live show is going to yeah. end up what's talked about the most. So let's just focus on on that. Let's just focus on us. Yeah. So I had hit up, I had hit up Kevin and and Maddie and Eric when we were getting ready to make like the announcement. Hey, these are the these are the two new guys. Even though Eric's been with us for about eight years now. Mm -hmm. Um. I hit them up like, Hey, do you want to say anything that we can post? Cause I thought it would be nice for those fans that are concerned and might think that there's something going on. And Kevin's like, yeah, quote, quote for what? And I was like, you know, cause we're getting ready to announce this and announce that. And it just, that text was never responded to. So oh, I never man. A quote. But then we texted each other like two weeks later. Yeah. I just never got a quote to include in the, in the new member post. Maybe he forgot, or maybe it's sitting in his yeah, trash yeah. folder somewhere, unsent. Yeah. I'm like, all right, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, like you said, like you've been doing this for a, a minute now, and you've been in and out of like lots of different projects, and has your hands in a lot of different things. Like you've kind of seen every way a person can leave a band or join a band. Yeah, <laughs> so. and it just always like mentally stresses me out when something yeah. like that is happening because it seems to happen a lot, and it's like if somebody's done or somebody's over it, or it's in a situation where we need to figure out how to fill a spot and continue moving forward, go for it. I just, yeah. I, I don't want to have any animosity. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to, you know, move on to something else, go for it, man. I said, su we're supposed to be a band of brothers. So if you feel like you belong somewhere else, go for it. I support you. Yeah. And I can't just freak out about it or wonder what are people going to think? It's like, yeah. You know what? It, this it is what it is, and we mm -hmm. just gotta keep gotta keep going. 
you know? I mean, that goes back to what you were saying earlier. Like, you just can't worry about what people think of you. Or exactly. what, I, I can't, I can't control draining. what's out of my control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's a good way to look, look at it. And like you said, like the love's still there and you guys can always like, who knows, like maybe you'll do another project with them down the road on something else or yeah, whatever. Like, you know, and I hate, I hate to bring sobriety into, into more things of the interview, but oh, the, per kidding, the perfect man. example is what I, I end the meetings that I go to sometimes, which is the serenity prayer. Mm, okay. You know, God grant me the serenity yeah. to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And that's a good rule of thumb for everything. You know? Yeah. You gotta accept yeah. the things you can't change. Because that, that's the worst, man. It's just like just laying awake at night or having anxiety or panics about like shit that you just, you know, you can't change, but you still can't like let it go for whatever reason. Like, yeah, learning to accept that. I mean, I, I've noticed that myself too. Like if like, you know, I, I drink not like a crazy amount, but I drink and like I do notice like the older I get, the more stress I have in my life that the next morning, like I, I feel that anxiety like times 10, you know, from mm -hmm. whatever, you know, like it's because the alcohol just kind of like numbs it. But it doesn't make it go away, you know. It's still bubbling. The more over. stressed you get, the more you need to numb it, and mm -hmm. then the more anxiety you have the next day about it all. Yeah. Well, that's cool, man. I'm glad. I'm glad you guys are on a good page. On a good page with Thrasher, and I hope. Uh, hope you guys can yeah. do some more stuff later down the road. For I, sure. I, I, I heard a rumor that you you accidentally joined Escape the Fate because you were trying to join a Skylar Drive. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. So. When I had my first kid, I was on tour overseas, really stressed out, not making anything, mm -hmm. found out management was stealing money. The other guys in the group weren't too worried about it. I was like extremely stressed over it. This was with Bless of All? Yeah, really medicating. And I was like, maybe I can't do this. Like mm -hmm. I was so stoked that I had had these dreams of touring with a band and it was happening so quickly. And here I am overseas already within like the first two and a half years of touring. Like, this is great. And just that just made me feel even worse. So yeah. I'm like, maybe I can't do this. Like maybe I need to go home, get a real job and focus on focus right. on my family. And so when that happened, I came home, things weren't going too well at home either <laughs> the way I thought they were going to go. And I'm like, man, I had this opportunity. I just need to go for it. I need to go for it and do it until the universe is telling me, no, you can't do right. this. Like, why am I going to be the one that's going to stop it? Hell no. So at that point, those guys let me know, well, we're going to try to move forward without you. I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> and so I wasn't playing on that response. <laughs> yeah. My friends at the Skylight Drive were trying to find somebody to sing. So I was talking to Joey mm -hmm. and he was sending me demos. And I was going to try to get together to record some vocals over those demos. So I hit him up on my little Nokia phone to be like, yo, you got those demos? I texted yeah. the wrong Joey. So there was two Joeys in my phone. Yeah. The Joey I had texted was ETF's manager at the time. Okay. And we had just recently, like a couple months prior, got done with our Black on Black tour. Oh, which is okay. Bless the fall. So Joey's like, Craig, who? Craig, bless the fall, Craig? What's going on? <laughs> Why are you trying to get demos from a Skylit Drive? Yeah. I explained to him what was going on. And he's like, well, dude, I need somebody to sing for ETF. We have no singer right now. We have three festivals coming up. I need you to fill in just for these three shows. Had Ronnie um, like publicly left at that point? Or was this still like under the wraps? No, this was still like a, they just needed somebody to perform. I guess he wasn't going to be performing those shows. Oh, okay. They needed somebody to fill in so that they didn't have to cancel. Mm-hmm. So originally it was just like, I was just filling in for these three shows. Oh, okay. Then it bamboozle. No, it was extreme thing in Vegas. They were doing an interview and the interviewer asked Robert of all people, because we're <laughs> like an old married couple together, me and that guy. They asked him, so is Craig your singer? And he's like, yeah, if he wants to be. Then there was a moment oh, yeah. where I didn't think it was going to work. And I suggested that they work things out. And they told me that they were going to work things out. Okay. So I, I went home after those three shows thinking that was it. Mm -hmm. Started another band in Arizona called The Word Alive during that time. So that's, so there's a significant gap then between those, it, those yeah. bamboos of shows. And then before I knew it, just a couple months, yeah. actually. Like, it all happened so quickly. Um, started that group, was working on it. Then I got the call back. Mm -hmm. which was like, 
we need you to come back like officially. Hell yeah. And then what really cemented it was John Feldman caught wind of this. He had seen us on the black on black tour. And according to him at the time, he really liked me as a performer and he really liked the sound of, of the band when it came to escape the fate, but not so much the sound of, of bless the fall. Mm-hmm. So when he caught wind that I had joined that band, he was like, you're coming into my studio. I'm doing the record. So within that month, we were in the ETF's old crappy beat up van oh, that was man. sitting big, driving to John's studio. That's I celebrated wild. my birthday on that day in the van on the way to Cali. And we went in the studio and ended up releasing this war is ours. And the rest is history wow. from there. Dude, what a, what a wild, like, like what if you had, like, what if you had texted like the right Joey? George? Yeah. Joey, yeah. like no Jag, like what a crazy, <laughs> who knows? Man. What we're, you know, that's why. Yeah. So Feldy's like, Oh cool. The two, my two favorite parts of these two bands came together. I got the singer from this yeah, band. My favorite parts of the, of that show are now together and I want to be a part of it. And thank God he did. I mean, that's how I, yeah. That connection made me meet my wife and oh really oh, wow. for all these years and and all that stuff but there's so many different ways it could have happened i mean i still remember another point in time where i was playing i think it was my second or third show with the word alive locally in arizona mm-hmm. and some of the bless the fall guys showed up and said we want you to come back <laughs> and i was like i can't yeah did you consider it a little bit oh yeah I <laughs> it. that was like that was my baby. Like that's, that's the roots, roots, roots right yeah. there. But I had just finished a record with Feldy. I was like, I'm not going to yeah, just bail right when this record's done. And like, I had just heard the final mixes and mm-hmm. it was getting ready to come out. And I was like on Epitaph and having meetings with Epitaph. And it was like just doing all these photos and everything was getting ready to come out. Yeah. It's like, how am I just going to say, nah, Right, right. Please. Yeah, I'm gonna like, go back to Bless the Fall. Like, yeah, you can't do that. Yeah. I feel like it would have burned so many bridges. So I was like, I, I can't, I can't do it. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like that that makes sense. Like that would be a lot to, and it would have felt kind of like a yeah. backtrack as well. Oh and, yeah, but I mean, I would have loved to see an era with you juggling all three bands. I think that would have been yeah. epic. Like you would have been the Travis Barker before Travis Barker started working I, with everybody. I don't even care. I just like like performing and making music yeah dude i mean well clearly <laughs> that works out for you i mean that's fucking great man i love it like, and everybody seems to be in a in an awesome place i love that the word alive is still around and yeah and, telling that, and i love that bless the fall is just coming back i mean they just dropped they a new did video, just dropped a new song like yesterday i believe I it think was so, yeah the dead and it sounds killer so it, the fact that everybody's still still doing their thing just makes man. me so happy I mean, and I don't then we just did the the uh, the Rockzilla tour. Yeah, even going back to you know original singer of Escape, like to see Ronnie walk out on stage in arenas. Right, right. And the energy of the arena was like the energy I would feel in like a really packed five hundred cap room. Yeah, it yeah. was like that same sort of energy you were feeling, but on that scale, it was just like, this is rad. That's got yeah, that's got to blow you like, away. As, a, as an observer from the back and just. Yeah, you know, being who I am in the history and being involved, it's just to, to just see that and remember all the history. It's just such a heartwarming, yeah, heartwarming thing. You know, what what's your relationship like with Ronnie these days? It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. We randomly chat like here and like just a comment here and there to each other. Or, yeah, or whatever. But so it's like mostly totally professional fine. then. Mostly professional, yeah. Yeah, you guys aren't doing barbecues on the weekends or anything. Yeah, yeah we're not getting together for barbecues or like, or doing anything like yeah. that. Plus, we're all older. Everybody has their own thing going on, and everybody's so busy. So, yeah, even like some of my closest homies. I mean, like me and Tyler were really, really close at one point in time. Mm-hmm. Plays bass for falling, and you know we barely, barely talk every day. But when we do talk, it's like yeah. Time has passed. Just everybody just has their own thing going. Oh, for sure. Yeah. How many kids do you have? Two. Two. Okay. Yeah. That will keep you busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I dude, it'd be great to, you know, fantasy booking here. It'd be cool to see Escape to Fate, Fall in Reverse, The Word Live, and Bless the Fall, one massive tour package. You could you could run around, sing for all. <laughs> yeah. 
Dude, I have I have such a fan perspective when it comes to that. I've wanted to do something like that for so long. Oh, when it was April Fools, I posted a, a his last walk flyer. Oh, uh, okay. Like with with actual dates and stuff like that. It's yeah. in the fall his last walk anniversary tour with oh, with Craig, Damn. and it it got so many people. I feel like even TJ texted me. He's like, "Wait, are we doing like, this?" <laughs> it's like playing Scranton on this day. I want to come out. I'm like, number one, I would have filled you guys in. Yeah, if I yeah. Was something like this. And number two, the date you're talking about, we're going to be in Europe together. <laughs> right, right, right. That's like, I fly to Europe tomorrow. Yeah. So, <laughs> man, that, man, what a cash cow that would be, too. <laughs> you guys, all four of you guys got together, all four bands. Dude, yeah. Massive. I would love, love to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, do you still love touring as much as you did even back in your teen years like do you still get that same like thrill or rush or does it does it feel more like a oh, job yeah I, I still do yeah. i still do for sure and i still get the same like butterflies in my stomach before i hit the stage depending on the show sometimes yeah um because there's just been so many up and downs in your career like it's not you're not going to show up to every single show yeah feeling that same way you felt when you were playing your first oh for sure or yeah. But, you know, I still get the same feeling and I still get the same connections. Like when I step out there, I'll find the one person that just you can see it in their eyes. They just have such a connection and it's like they've been looking forward to this night forever. And that's yeah. why I do. It. You know what I mean? Because that was that was yeah. me. That was yeah. me in my first concert, seeing Lincoln Park or going to see mm. the use or even going to some local shows like. I really looked forward to those performances and mm -hmm. it really did motivate me to said man i can i can do this too and i can make my dreams come true even if it wasn't music yeah just it really inspired me so to see that in, in people's faces in the crowd when i'm stepping out on stage it's very humbling and you know a reminder of why i wanted to do it in the first place which is great very cool yeah i, I love to i mean i love that you still have that drive and that passion because a lot of people get burned out and they just like they don't even want to hit the road anymore like, i mean i mean miley cyrus yeah, just announced that she's done touring when I, was, when I was hitting this it was like instead of Instead of seeing the people that were connecting with it, I would yeah. see the one person that was doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the one person <laughs> yeah. that's like, oh man, that's who I would notice. I wouldn't yeah. notice like all the front row, like really loving what I'm doing. It was like I would notice that zero in on that. negativity. Yeah. yeah, just focus on the negative, and which would make me feel negative, and then I just you know fall yeah. darker into it. And it's just like you just got to change your perspective, man. Yeah, that's a. I mean, that's a great perspective to have, and leads for a happier life 100 percent for sure oh, yeah so i mean do have you experienced i know a lot of bands are really getting hit hard by these merch cuts on tours and i know you're probably playing in a lot of like live nation venues and stuff is that something you guys have had to like deal with like has it been increasingly worse over the last couple of tours it's you know that's interesting because it's always i remember touring back in the day it's always a crappy thing when you mm -hmm. have to do a merch cut because it's like that's kind of your bread and butter yeah when you're out road it's like this is what do you mean you're going to take a cut of this right um and then over the years a lot of bands at at every level have now done vip mm -hmm. vip meet and greets to try to combat any sort of cuts so that they can still get out there and, yeah. and tour and put gas in their van or whatever it may be or pay for the bus whatever you got to do so i've seen that happen but you know now now like we get cuts from that even Oh, wow. They take from those too. Oh yeah. There's oh, cuts taken geez. out of VIP at some places. Sometimes it's venues. Sometimes it's the promoters that's putting on the tour. They yeah. want to take a cut of the VIP so that, but it, I mean, it's, it's a business, man. It is what it is. Everybody yeah. needs to, everybody needs to be able to do it and yeah. get what they need. You know, promoters are making the gamble of promoting the show mm -hmm. and hoping the show sells well. So if they, they want to feel safer by doing it by requesting a cut of this or that then that's that's what they need to do well and to be fair they are giving you like a five by five area to set up your table i mean that's <laughs> that's not for nothing man that's a that's a pretty good chunk of their venue to <laughs> oh yeah dude i've been to places where it's like hey where's your tables we don't have any <laughs> you didn't bring your own tables <laughs> okay all right then dude where's your merch area wherever you want yeah <laughs> Right. next next to the bathroom i guess i don't know where do you want to put it like, 
Yeah. I mean, it sucks, dude, because like, you know, you're not getting a percentage of those drink sales. You're not getting a percentage of the food sales or anything like that. And like, not that you would even want them, but it's just like, you know, in reciprocity or whatever, it's like, you know, to be fair, like you're giving up a piece, like the, the people are only there to see you. Like they're, they're not at that venue for anyone. <laughs> like they're not just hanging out in a house of blues in the main room on a Saturday night if there's no band playing, you know, it's definitely how I used to think about it at one point in time. Yeah. You know, we've definitely had arguments in the past with something happening at the venue or with a, with a shady promoter or something mm -hmm. like that, where I'm like, everybody's here tonight because it's, it's our show. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but then everybody gets that same attitude. It's like, I'll just book a different one. Yeah. Yeah. But fair enough. <laughs> and again, I guess it comes back to, Yeah. I guess it comes back to letting go of the things you can't control. I mean, exactly. like, again, if you, the only way around that would be to, I guess, book basement shows for the next escape to fate yeah, tour or something. We're do it ourselves. It's just, you know, yeah, it is what it is. Just get out there and do your thing, man. Yeah. Yeah. I Cause think at that, the end of the day, what, what am I complaining about? Right. You know? Yeah. When, I, I revert back to my thoughts at 15 and I'm like, can I be in a band? Mm-hmm. I really make it happen it's like dude you're literally out on tour right now you made it happen living your dream for sure humble yourself you know yeah yeah i, I, th I mean i think that's a really fresh re perspective too about the whole topic because i mean it does seem like like you were saying how you used to feel is how a lot of bands are vocalizing on twitter or whatever you know toxic platform they choose to fucking spew out shit like that seems to be like yeah the go-to thing uh just to immediately be angry and hate and stuff but yeah i think it's i think that's a fresh perspective to hear from a band member yeah that's just what i always try to personally think about and you know like your question about cuts i try to look at it big picture mm -hmm. i'm like i feel like i would only truly care about something like that if i was on like a taylor swift level yeah right you right know? if the cut is losing you millions yeah yeah i feel like that's that's a fair enough cause for concern and if the guy is losing you 500 bucks right. <laughs> yeah. you really need to be an ass yeah. you know what i mean like you're gonna it, cause that much of a stir right. over that yeah and things like probably won't change unless artists at that level start making us think about yeah, it and it's but. like you know, you want to make everybody happy because everybody's in this together. They're trying to make the show happen. Yeah. If you're a nightmare to work with, why do they want to work with you again? Oh, dude, that's the so biggest like thing, man. Everybody needs to get what they need to get and what mm. they deserve. And, you know, if you don't like the fact that somebody's going to take a cut, just tell your booking agent then that you don't want to book shows there. Yeah. You agree to it. You can't complain about it if you show up to the venue and you're there. Yeah. And the show's happening. That is it's a like good this point. was already worked out. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point that people I see people bands complain about merch cuts like the day after the show. And it's like, well, you didn't know before you got there what, <laughs> what the merch cut was going to be. But, so yeah, it's be more, funny. be more aware of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, dude, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you got dad stuff and music stuff to do. I know you probably are about to start a whole other band as soon as you get off this call. I mean, probably, <laughs> you probably got a few projects in the pipeline already. Got some yeah. band members headed to your house. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Where should we find you and your bands? All your 30 probably like, what's the best place to go to for all this stuff? Best place to go for the band stuff is, is probably the band's Instagram seems to be at least the most active or the band's Facebook. It's facebook.com, you know, slash escape the fate, mm -hmm. uh, escape the fate on Instagram. Um, I'm live on Twitch when I'm not on the road pretty much every day cool. when I am on the road. It's like every other day, especially leaving on an overseas tour. So it all depends on what the Wi-Fi is like in all these different places. <sighs> so I have to see twitch.tv slash Craig Mabbit. Two Bs, two Ts. <laughs> two Bs, uh, two Ts. People, <laughs> still miss that T sometimes. Oh, so this do. day. <laughs> <laughs> that's reasonable man you can find us there and, and out of the shadows is out september 1st we got a new single dropping um towards the end of june good good so another one coming after mm -hmm. uh hate myself is the first one then low and now we have cheers to goodbye is oh. the title of the next track coming you out. heard it here and first it, it does have a feature vocalist i can't say who but i'm very excited about it okay are there gonna be um, a lot of features on this new album or is that just the only one um 
No, that's the that's the only one. Oh, okay, so this one. is gonna be the big feature. Then. But it is like a vocal feature because I know the last record we had a feature, but it was a, you know, mm -hmm. like Sterling was a violinist. Yeah, yeah, which was so, epic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was sick, dude. She killed that song. Hell yeah, such a talent. Yeah, like fucking who thought like a violinist <laughs> like a classically trained violinist on metalcore so, songs works so well like, like just have our people hit her up see if she'd be down and yeah. she was down that's so cool she came that's in so and slayed it and i love doing yeah. things like that and i love doing off the wall off the wall features like barker was on that record too, i was gonna you know? say you were like one of the first bands i saw collab with barker before he went on his like tyrant of like just collabing <laughs> on everything barker, like barker, yeah barker do it man he's got Dude, the talent fuck yeah man and that was a great song you guys did together i loved that track but yeah yeah man um well i'm excited for that i can't wait for this new song uh and i'm i'm, I'm excited to figure out who the uh the it's very yeah and it's very different yeah okay it's so it's something like we're not gonna expect that yeah it's like yeah. without giving too much away i don't know it reminds me of the track it's just me from the this war is ours album okay as far as the bells and whistles of it Okay. So it's like my chemi in a lot of different parts of it. Very melodic. Gets really nice and heavy in some nice. parts. I don't know. I really like it. I can't it's wait. off the wall for us to want to do this as a single or for the label to be like, yeah, let's do this one. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited that everybody was down to do this one as a single. Can, so, can we ever expect a Craig Mabbitt uh, uh, hyper pop project? Is that ever going to be in the way? Hyper pop? Yeah. What is hyper pop? I can see you doing some hyper. You ever listen to 100 Gex, man? Oh, dude. No. Oh, man. So it's like it's like post hardcore emo from the 2000s mixed with like basically Skrillex. So it's basically Skrillex. So Skrillex and from first to last together almost. <laughs> like it's like just like just glitchy Sick. like electronic like the stuff. Cor like that corn album that Skrillex did uh, with corn. Kind of, but that, that's a little heavier. Like emo, not corn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like. I'm dude. All the hyper pop fans are probably gonna roast me so hard for comparing to EDM because they do not like to <laughs> associate the two. Oh, really? But I, that, I mean, I'm old, so that's what. When I heard it, I was like, "Oh, it's just EDM." Like, no, it's not EDM. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, yeah, I suggest checking out. When I first got into Skrillex, it always reminded me of that type of music, anyways. Because when the yeah. when the beat hits, I I feel the same way I feel when a breakdown hits. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, I still do the stank face and everything. So. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta check out check out 100 gex yeah i'll see their links. name a lot of different places everywhere so yeah m shadows from avenge sevenfold says he's they're one of his favorite bands right now yeah yeah they're uh they're, they're popping off like they're uh they definitely got a whole new sound to themselves yeah i'm always down to check out something new cool um all right man well if there's no lasting parting words of wisdom for the millions and millions of jesse lee fans out there well, I, we'll I guess and... I guess the final send off would just be thank you very much for being interested and in, in wanting to talk to me and oh, to yeah. the listeners. Thank you very much for wanting to listen to the band and giving me an opportunity to do what I love to do. Cool. Very great to still be here and grateful to have all of you. You heard it here first. He is a grateful motherfucker. <laughs> all right, take care, brother. Peace. You too, brother. Peace. <laughs>